play. So th- I'm going to play this clip that features Adam22 on No Jumper explaining why he fired everybody. Um, if you don't know, I'm going to briefly surmise Adam22 of No Jumper recently decided to cancel all the podcasts across the board with the exception of two. And basically the idea behind it is to focus more on quality and quantity. But obviously because he's done that, a bunch of co-hosts who have kind of their whole identity is kind of no jumper. They've done a lot to kind of try to steady the ship after the, those initial people left, the ADs and T-Rolls and stuff. They obviously bombed and lost their jobs and it kind of came out the blue and it was with the media effect with no real kind of warning. So everyone's been talking about it or everyone on my side of the internet has been talking about it. It's been a big topic. So I'm going to play a little bit of the clip where Adam22 speaks about it on the Tuesday show, I think. Is it Tuesday show? Yeah, I think it's a Tuesday show. Um, and then I'm going to obviously offer some of my co- commentary regarding people getting fired in general because I think there's always a right way and a wrong way to do it and i think partly um adam did it kind of in the wrong way in my personal opinion but i'm going to play the clip for you and then you can kind of make up your own mind only burning question i have at the top of my head with the split is you said it was non-financial you talked to your business partner so that's the main thing right well that was one of the not that, that was one of, that was one of the base you said it was non-financial i mean sorry it was, it was a financial was, yeah. oh. looking at how much each one of these shows cost to operate and i think boom, honestly boom, it was kind of like an aesthetic decision slash like just a content decision as mm-hmm. well and slash a sanity of mind decision slash a business decision for me to just kind of realize like take a step back i hate to do this but i kind of got to like look at all of my peers in the space and okay. kind of compare myself to them, look at their business models. I look at somebody like, you know, Ack obviously is kind of focused on the streaming thing. I feel like he's faced challenges with trying to put together the academy and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I look at somebody like Vlad, I look at the way that he segments his content up. He doesn't have any consistent shows on his podcast that he's not a part of aside from the Reggie Wright one that he's been trying mm-hmm. to spearhead. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with that. I look at Say Cheese. They really probably drop like the least amount of content of right. anybody, but I feel like the quality is very high yeah. and still Say mm-hmm. Cheese has a great brand name regardless. And he's able to do other things that make money, like utilizing the Say Cheese branding. I think for me, no jumper, if you look at it through 2017, 2018, mm-hmm. 2019, it was like very focused around one thing. It was like, we're going to get as many interviews as possible. We're going to do the best interviews we can. As you go into 2020, Views. Our natural reaction to the pandemic is kind of sure. like we need to double down on just like whoever we got here talking on camera, right. enter into what was realistically a kind of impressive era when we had at the end of the day, it really was, kind of thriving. Crazy. No, it was crazy. Yeah. When you think about it, t Rail, as much of a bozo as he has shown himself to be over yeah, the past year, he, him, AD, <clears throat> shout out to AD, I guess, uh, and Duno, like putting them all together on a show, mm-hmm. that was pretty impressive. So then we kind of like kept chasing after that building up more shows more hosts etc disconnected and that yeah exactly and like having all those kind of go at the same time was kind of like unprecedented within the hip-hop space to have like one channel that had this many different shows doing good and i feel like in the wake of them leaving the channel Mm -hmm. i spent a year basically trying to sort of rebuild all that and i think ultimately the conclusion that i kind of drawn was that i don't I, i don't need to be holding on to like things that previously worked on the podcast or whatever like I just need to be a little bit faster to identify what's working and what isn't and I'm I I feel like at a certain point in time my view of content creation was that the only way we're going to make money is by creating an absolute shitload of content that's not really necessarily the case at this point and in fact I even felt like we were kind of losing money on certain things so what I really wanted to do this week was just do like a full reset simplify no jumper down to like the 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 simplest parts that actually work right and obviously there's been a a, 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 i actually feel like almost everybody that i spoke to everybody i spoke to on the phone took it very well and was very cool about it rick baby lush almighty uh flacco etc yeah i called dw flame i understand that he was saying that i did not call him today on the news that is not true i I did down on that what I doubled down on. I didn't watch any of the clips. I'm just uh, like reading Reddit titles to base my, my, my knowledge of. You right. So I just like, did he call okay. you or not? Because I did call him. You know, I wanted to have that conversation mm-hmm. with DW. He's been around here like the shortest. Okay. Anyway, you get the gist of what he's been saying. You get the gist of it. Essentially, that end bit kind of surmises why it kind of didn't work and it flopped for him anyway. But my basically my conclusion on this whole affair is like, there's always a right way to go about firings and a wrong way. 
The wrong way is the way that we all know, which is the lack of communication, which I've obviously suffered from. Um, I think I've shared this story before on the podcast, but I was working for Depop for like a very, very long time, being like a community support agent, basically, which basically is basically, which is essentially just customer service. So I was handling a lot of the inbound queries. Where's my item? Where's my refund? All this malarkey on Depop for a, for like a year, maybe a year and a half and stuff. Really, really good time working there. I was working at Depop when they had their original office at Zetland House, which is near like Old Street. And then I stayed there during the transition of when they moved to the new office, which is like near Liverpool Street kind of area. It's a really nice spanky one with great facilities. And it's, it's, like, it's done by this really famous architectural firm that designed it. It's a fucking cool office. I stayed there for a couple of months, but then obviously I had the high and mighty idea of moving and going to another company. The reason why I left actually Depop was basically because I didn't feel like I had any route to going to kind of, you know, progressing and kind of getting a promotion. I didn't feel like I could jump for another team. Like the other, the, the logical step for me to go from working in customer service was obviously to go work in marketing. That's basically a lot where my experience is. I've done a lot of marketing managing. I've done a lot of social media managing. I've done all that sort of stuff. You know, the usual stuff you can kind of imagine someone like me carrying a MacBook Air underneath my armpit would fucking be into, right? All the fucking stuff that doesn't really matter in a, in a big company. I've kind of done that. And obviously that was a place I wanted to go in. But unfortunately, when I was at Depop, this lady, I forgot her name, but she's like a famous like influencer. I think she's from New York. She joined Depop. And again, it's not her fault, but she seemed like a bit of a bitch. And I didn't necessarily vibe with her that well. Not again, not her fault. She seems like a cool girl, but she brought a little bit of that fashion-y, cool kid, bitchy vibe to Depop. I think so, personally. I don't think it existed before she came, but when she came, she'd like, you know, she got that marketing team into fucking shape. She cracked the whip, but by cracking the whip, she also made it very separate to the whole company. They kind of were walking around a bit high and mighty before we were all kind of together. But then I felt like when she came, it kind of, they kind of made the marketing team a bit more separate and they almost felt like they were like an agency working within Depop. It was fucking weird. So I didn't feel like, I've never been somebody that's been, which is kind of my, to my detriment. I've never been someone that's good at working at knowing how to kind of social climb. Like I can work the room. I think I'm good at working a room, but I'm not good at like sucking up to people if I don't really give a shit about you as a person. It just doesn't work that way. So because of that, I didn't want to put myself through it. So I thought, you know what? Let me do the, the admirable thing. Let me not stay and be angry and be pissed off at my job. Let me go look for another job. And I also thought, oh, I stayed here for a year and a half. This would be a good chance to kind of get new experience, improve my pay, and kind of go from there. Obviously, it flopped <laughs> because the next place I went to, it only stayed around for three months and then the, the company went bankrupt. But thinking back, right? Thinking back, there's no way that that guy at that new company that I went to didn't know that the company was already on thin ice. But he still hired me. That's the thing that I think is fucking, like, unforgivable. So that lack of communication, I think, is the worst thing because it's okay. A company fails. Like Adam22 said, he tried to compete with Figmunity World. He tried to do like content for content, view for view, bar for bar type of battle. He tried to recreate the magic of having AD, AD T-Rail, all these guys on these fucking platform with these new people. It didn't work. That's fine. But if it doesn't work, give man a heads up. Don't just announce it on the day. Don't just call me on the day, announce it on your Snapchat, and then it's done the next day. That's what you basically done. It's almost in a period of like three days. You guys are out. It's finished. Not even like two week notice, not even to the end of the month. Or well, end of the month is basically next week. But still, give me a bit of like, come on, man. Like, do me a fucking favor. Like, communicate. Same with my guy at the other company that I was with. If you're going to hire somebody, and I think, to be fair anyway, that guy was a bit of a crook anyway. He's a fucking crook. And if I ever did see him on road now... I'd fucking smash him over the head with a, with a fucking steel baseball bat, even though I fucking got my money. Word on fucking mother. But that guy's a crook because I think personally he must have hired me and others because, you know, in startup world, it's a kind of a bit of a scam. Like if you hire more people or if you have like a more diverse workforce, you can maybe use that to your advantage in your fucking deck to get more money in the next round of investment. It sounds batshit crazy, but it's kind of true. That's what they did. So I think he hired me under the proviso. Okay, cool. This big black dude, right? is going to come into his company. He's going to make us look diverse and cool and hip. And we're going to use him in a deck. They actually used me when we went to a fucking Amazon meeting, which is something, you know, whatever, a story for another day. And then we're also going to get some money and it's going to be fine. But he should have gave me the he should have gave me the choice to make my own grown up decision at that interview. He said, "Hey guy, I like you. I want to hire you, but I just want to let you know this is very confidential. 
but this company only has like six months of runway. Are you willing to commit and try and gamble? And then I could I could decide then if I want to or not. If I could decide to gamble or stick with Depop. But he didn't give me that choice. He just said, yeah, we're good to go. Come to the company. You're our social media manager. You can be the brand director. Maybe you can be the creative director. So he, gave me, he gassed me up, bro. He fucking, he gassed me up. You know what I mean? He shot me full of fucking hope. And obviously that hope came gushing out of my mouth because nothing fucking transpired. So I think in this particular case, Adam22 fucked up with his lack of communication. The DW Frame story that he's telling here at the end, DW Frame was kind of angry and kind of pissed off on the news, basically saying that, oh, everybody else got a call. I didn't get a phone call. And Adam22 is arguing, oh no, I did call you, but that's not good enough for an owner or CEO. If you called him once and he didn't pick up, call him again. Leave a message, say, hey, DW, I have a very important call. With, I really need to jump on the phone. Let me know when there's a good time. Text me back. Let me know when, I could, when we could talk. You have to get on the phone with them until... But before you get on the phone, don't discuss it on camera. And this is the main thing I don't like about Adam. He's not a good leader. He's not a good boss. He might be a good visionary in terms of like where to take the company, what type of ideas to have and shit. But in terms of the day-to-day -day managing of people, he's horrible because he's a horrible person, basically. Deep down, he doesn't really care about people in, in actuality. He uses people like pawns. And it's obviously showing because he, he kind of disregarded. And, and again, I think those guys kind of were full of themselves a little bit too much as well. ADT and those guys, they kind of think way too much of themselves. But I think they are right in that Adam did was too quick to dismiss their contribution. Act as if they weren't really that important to No Jumper. They didn't really add to the bottom line. They didn't really change things. They didn't really contribute. But then when they left and he tried to recreate the magic, he fell flat on his feet. He fell flat or they fell flat on their face. And now he's having to change his whole business model up because he couldn't compete. And just believe he's trying to do this whole like sympathy, maturity, or oh, it's, you know, but if Figmunity World had to cancel or had to fire people or had to restructure, he'd be dancing on their graves. He'd be going fucking crazy. He'd be having a, a blast if it was them. So don't have too much sympathy for this guy because he was the one that tried to get low, tried to sling dirt, tried to sling mud and shit. It didn't work out. And now he's all like, Ugh. but all this to say, all this to say, there is actually a good way. There is actually a good way to fucking let go of people. And I have to give a big shout out to my guy, Craig, of this former company I used to work for called Parade World. Parade World was pretty cool company to work for. It also came at a time where I was fucking struggling, struggling out here sending CVs out for like a year plus, no reply. I think in that year, I might have had like two face-to-face -face interviews. It was tough. That was during like the peak of COVID. I was struggling hard, right? And then this Craig guy takes a chance on me at Parade World and hires me as an ops guy, customer service, blah, 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 type of thing. And it was a great job because I got a chance to like do a lot of stuff like working with the stores, onboarding them, talking to them through how to put their, their items up on the store, you know, helping to kind of list things and, you know, streetwear, skatewear type of company. Fucking amazing. But unfortunately, that company went under because the business model just, it's kind of like a similar business model to Farfetch. It's basically like a marketplace for brands. So we don't really have any inventory. The inventory was mostly on the store side. They list their stuff on our site, make it look like it's ours. But then you obviously buy it through them. They get this, you know, whatever. It's kind of, whatever. It didn't work. It's convoluted. Cool. But he told us literally four, two to four months ahead of time. He said, hey guys, we've literally got six months of runway. I'm trying my best to get some investment. I'm trying my best to raise some money to give us more. But if it doesn't work out, this is going to be the end because I'm going to scale down the company and it's only going to be me and this other person, Asma as well, big up Asma. We're going to be working and holding the company down until the end of the year and then it's going to be done, unfortunately, and I'm going to have to get a real job. And he literally did it. I think in the end, when it came to it, I think he must have put his house on sale. Like this guy was real, like a real CEO, a real founder, a real business guy. Like he was putting on the line, like we never missed our pay. It never came late. Um, he gave us plenty of heads up at, at the end. Um, he gave us a nice fucking hamper um, as we left, like as a thank you. Like, hey guys, I'm really sorry it didn't work out. He almost felt, he almost felt embarrassed by it. And I was like, nah, don't feel embarrassed, bro. It's a business, isn't it? It didn't work. It is what it is. What can you do? There were some mistakes done along the way, but it's just what it is, isn't it? Like the nature of the business changed. That whole uh, marketplace kind of platform thing doesn't work anymore. So it is what it is. What can you do? But he was so gracious about it, so kind, so thoughtful. And again, the communication about it, the communication. One day, he basically called us all into the office because we were mostly working remotely. We had one or two days we'd go into the office to do like power sessions and shit. But he called us into the office one time, didn't even give us a heads up. But then 
throughout the day he took us all into a room and spoke to us individually i saw me personally i'm a i'm a low maintenance i'm a matter of fact kind of guy I, i'm a straight shooter i don't really waste any much i don't really need a lot of comforting but other people in the company obviously took it didn't took it didn't take it too well but he spent hours with people the whole day he took people in the room spoke the news to them spoke to them for a long time like literally and this is obviously not including all the time that he spoke to us before giving us a heads up like just like hey guys don't plan a wedding or anything don't do it because this is whatever else, do you know what i mean he laid it all out for us in the thing and at the end he gave everybody the grace to have that one-on-one -on -one human eye to eye mouth to mouth ear to ear bo to bo fucking conversation in the room and that was something i was like wow bro what a contrast from going from another company, that other company I was at previously, where I was there for three months and the company went under. And I think at the time, I think I might have been on holiday. I think I might have been on like a staycation in Manchester. I was, in a I was on a staycation in Manchester. I was waiting for my pay to come through so I could like buy some other shit. I went to go check my account. Nothing was in there. And then when I went to, when I went to, when I went to check the Slack, the Slack had been closed down. I was like, oh no. Oh, I got the email notice on my thing, like, your email is this. I was like, what the fuck happened? And luckily I had the, because sometimes, I don't, know, I don't know about you at work, but not every workplace I have the, the fucking numbers of my colleagues. Luckily I had the number of one colleague. I was able to text her quickly on WhatsApp, like, hey, what the fuck's going on? And she gave me the, the lowdown. I was like, oh my God, literally found out like that. Like, I didn't even get any communication. So to go from that style of hiring and firing, so that to the other one with um, Craig at Parade World is a big difference. But I think the main thing, the main thing for me, the main thing for me is communication and giving a shit about your people. This guy doesn't give a shit about anyone but himself. And it goes to show now the, the chucking chickens are coming home to roost because now you don't give a shit about anybody else. Cool. Make all the money for yourself. But now you're on your own. And, and and the other thing as well, he's fucked up a sharp too. The sharp thing I don't like, man. I don't again say what you want about sharp, but he held down fucking no jumper. He was the one defending no jumper. He was there that rid the fucking storm when he was going through all this shit, getting cancelled for diddling and allegedly dating underage girls. Sharp fucking stood there and took all the beatings with him. He took all the fucking lashings. You know what I mean? Because when he was getting cancelled, they were looking at sharp as well and bringing up his sex trafficking thing. Oh, you're a pimp, blah 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 blah. He was getting loads of fucking strays. He was getting loads of fucking friendly fire, not so friendly fire coming his way. And then that now look, now Sharp is what it's kind of got kind of been like pushed out as well. Like honestly, these type of people you should be careful. Like when like it's that saying, isn't it? As that saying goes, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. When somebody shows you who they are, fucking believe them. But anybody everybody at no jumper, keep your heads up. Hopefully everybody lands on their feet. I've seen a few people start their own streaming thing. Um, Suspect is doing his. Also, I hope that suspect doesn't watch the Reddit too much because the Reddit people are, oh, look at his fucking setup. It looks like a potato. But bro, these guys on Reddit were complaining. That's the thing. Never listen to the internet. Just do your content because the guys on Reddit, they run no jumper anyway, right? They, they bully them into doing anything. They were complaining that these guys don't have their own motion. Oh, they don't have their own motion. They don't do their own thing. They're relying on fucking Adam 22. Suspect does his own thing. He's starting. Because, you know, it's hard to start this shit. Like, I had to start with help from you guys and shit. Like, it's difficult to start this sort of stuff and know what you're doing. He started, and now people are complaining about the fucking quality. But, like, let him, let him fucking build. Let them build. Let them build. So, let's hopefully that helps. Hopefully that works, sorry. Hopefully they kind of build from there. But when I saw this firing of the host that No Jumper, it brought back so many bad memories of the times that I've been let go. And it was really, really brutal. And it hurts you so much. And you start to question <laughs> every decision that you made in your life. And you start to wonder like, maybe I deserve this for X and Y thing. Because I also had a run. I also had a run where I was so lucky. I worked for some great startups that I gained a lot of, because the, the thing about startups is that they're fucking chaotic. They're a bit of a nightmare. Especially if you work in ones, I worked in ones where they had like a flat hierarchy, which is an, anytime you go to a company and they tell you you've got a flat hierarchy, run. It's a, it's a nonsense. Flat hierarchy basically means there is no boss. That also means it, there's endless meetings. Meetings about meetings about meetings because no one can make a fucking decision, right? So it's fucking awful. So never work in a company where they have a flat hierarchy and free co-founders because trust me, there's going to be beef. So I've worked in those type of places and they're fucking a, they're a nightmare. But the good thing about a startup is that you get a chance to sometimes work in a role that your CV doesn't permit you in other places. They, they, they take more of a chance. They're, they're about doers. So if you can show an acumen or a, percent, or a propensity to do something, if you can show you can actually do the job, they'll just give it to you. 
So you get a chance to get experience in a role that you probably wouldn't get if you worked in the corporate world, blah, blah, blah. So that's good. But the other flip side of it where it's, why it's fucking shit is all this stuff, the shakiness of it. One day you're, you know, you're fucking having a great time. You're on stream, hanging out at Adam 22. Next time he's doing a Snapchat video telling you your job is fucking gone and now you have to fucking, you know, cancel all your fucking summer holidays. It's fucking brutal. It really is fucking, fucking brutal.